Hello and welcome to the mock exam for my part 4 Java MTA course. In this one we're going to be looking at the answers to the iteration and selection questions on the MTA exam. As always we're going to try and make we, the exam questions are very much like the ones that you will encounter in the MTA exam. If you can get all 14 right I would say that you're prepared for the MTA exam for this section. If you're getting nine or around that, then this is the pass mark, so you just need to make sure that you're ready. If you're getting anything seven or less, then you need to make sure that you're revising a little bit more before you take the MTA test. If you're finding these useful, please like, and if you want to see more mock exams, please subscribe and you'll be notified when they come onto my channel. Okay, let's get started. So the first question is looking at a switch statement or a switch case statement. What you have to do, uh, the, uh, the question is a three part question. Each one is worth one mark. Here are the possible answers. What you need to do is what, what would be output if you inputted A, lowercase? What would be output if you inputted B, uppercase? And what would be outputted if you inputted three? So pause the video and see if you can answer those questions. So hopefully you've paused the video. Let's have a look. So again, if you inputted three, or sorry, if you inputted a lowercase a, you would get three because it would go for default. If you did capital uppercase b, then it matches the case b section, so print two. And if you printed three or inputted three, you would again output three there because it's using the default. If you're unsure about the switch statement or why these answers are correct, Please look at the video that I've created in my playlist about switch statements. Question two is questioning your knowledge of variable scope. So in this piece of code, we have an additional uh, block that it adds additional scope to our main method. So again, this is a two part question. Each one is worth one point. Here are the possible answers. So if you inserted this code on line 10, what would be the output? If you inserted this code on line 14, what would be the output? So pause the video and see if you can answer it. So hopefully you've paused the video. Uh, the answers are the first one is five and the second one is error. So if you've got that right, well done. If you got it wrong, then you need to have a look at my video showing how scope or how a scope will, uh, is affected within Java because there'll be a lot of MTA questions regarding variable scope. Question three is talking about jump statements. Um, so you have to good, have a good idea on what jump statements are. Uh, the two statements that are not uh, jump statements are case and default. Both continue or break are jump statements. If you're confused a little bit about what jump statements are for the MTA exam, have a look at the video jump statements in my playlist. Question four is looking at the shorthanded versions of the mathematical operators, as well as how um, you can read a shorthand if statement. So if you haven't, please pause the video and attempt it. Um, if you have, the correct answer would be 85. Again, if you're unsure about why it's 85, please watch those two videos that are on my playlist. So the fifth question is just checking your understanding of for a for loop. So it's a three part question. You just have to make sure that you understand which is the right answer. So of course the answer is C. So again, you need to declare the data type of that variable. You then need to declare what happens after each loop. And the last one is you have to uh, declare what happens within that for loop code. Again, if you're unsure about why C is the correct answer, please have a look at the video on my for loops. The sixth question is also using a for loop, so it's making sure that you understand how a for loop works, as well as looking a little bit about the mathematical operators with the shorthand version and the logical operators and. So if you're unsure about what this double and means, have a look at my logical operators. Again, if you're unsure about this, this shorthand and mathematical term, have a look at that playlist. Um, if you have not done the, the question yet, pause the video and see if you can get the right one. So the right answer would output six based on this code. Number seven is also looking at logical statements or log logical operators. What you have to do is just link the definition of the operators with the symbol. 
what Java MTA does quite a lot is it's trying to test you whether you get confused whether it's two or one and this hap this can occur quite often in the exam this kind of things so they'll try and test your ability to remember whether it's one symbol or two symbols uh, hopefully you've paused the video and you've got an answer let's have a look so if both conditions are true we have that double that means and and that this symbol means the not statement here for that logical operator if you're unsure what logical operators are again please check out that playlist for that op logical operator video for question eight we're looking at a do while loop so you have to understand the difference between a do while and a while loop in the mta exam if you uh hopefully you've paused the video or you've got an answer because we're going to have a look at what the correct answer is now, which is the infinite loop. So the problem with this one is that it will create an infinite loop. And you have to know that when a loop creates or when something in a do while or while loop creates an infinite loop. If you're unsure about what this is and why it creates it, then have a look at that video, the while versus do while um, video on my playlist. This question nine is a little bit tricky. What you have to do is you have to try and put the code in the correct order to complete a for loop with an array. So you have to be a little bit away, aware of what an array is and then how we use array, not a for, but a for each to print it out. So the code, the correct code for this would be C. So you have the, the you declare and initialize your array first. You then do uh, the for statement and then you just need to be aware of those nested uh, brackets that show the scope of that for each. They, the MTA do like to try and trip you up, making sure that you are aware how important those brackets are. So always try and pay attention to where you put those brackets for the for loop or the while loop. And the 10th question is about the keywords used for selection. Pause the video and try and come up with the answer. So hopefully you've paused the video. The correct answer is switch. So if you don't know what a switch statement is, have a look at my playlist and look for the switch statement because it's important to know how to use it for a select statement. So hopefully you managed to get all 14 right, which means that for iteration and selection, I would say you stand a pretty good chance of passing that section for the MTA exam. Again, if you're looking at nine, I would say suggest having a look at the videos because each of my videos for each segment ha contains questions. So you can always practice looking at those questions that I created for your weak areas and just practicing those. And again, if you're having seven or, or less, I would actually go through each of my playlist videos and just doing each or all the questions on all the videos just to make sure that you really cement the important information you need for the Java MTA course or the exam. Again, if you found this video useful, please like. And if you want to get more mock exams, please subscribe to the channel and I'll keep you posted when I publish them.